All right. Well, I tell you what, guys, we are so excited. Phenomenal job to Keith, Thomason, and Jordan. That was some awesome material. But I can tell you one thing, guys. I am super duper excited about this panel when you've got Alex Cromie, Regional Vice President. You've also got Blair Ollendorf, a senior Regional Vice President. And then we've got Dusty Todd, another senior Regional Vice President. So we are super duper excited for the panel coming up, which is developing agents. So everybody wants to make sure they can actually really take their agents from bad to good and then go from good to great. So there's this learning curve inside that first anywhere from 30 to 90 days and then outside those 90 days, that good to great. And how in the world do we develop those agents? So you're gonna be hearing right now from these top regional vice presidents in our entire company about how they develop agents. So we're gonna go first up to Mr. Alex Karomi. So Mr. Alex, when it comes to the, you know, inside the learning curve, so inside that learning curve, going from right. bad to good, they just started, they just launched as a new agent. What are some things that they can do inside that learning curve? So really that what comes to mind for me is field training, right? Because we're going to be out in the field, right? Some in, in-house days, maybe to review underwriting. That's great. But a lot of field training. And for me, this is where your field habits as the new builder, as the new coach are going to become the field habits of your agent. If you go home early, your agents will go home early. So in the field, you're setting the right example for your agents from the get go. Again, your field habits become their field habits and you're gonna measure your agents throughout the field training consistently. That's very important. And so for me, that's the four A's and that's the 10 steps. And I'm taking notes on my phone so I can recall as our approach in our presentation goes on. I don't forget something. And it's always by the four A's and it's always by the 10 steps. And I give them consistent feedback and we hone each step. And that way, it is, it's, it's quality feedback that's consistent so they can make the adjustments they need to. You're not just giving adjustments off the cuff. On top of field training, we clearly have to give them the proper resources. You can't build a house unless you have all of the correct tools. And this is your job to equip them. This is everything from their iPads to their personal budgets to their new sales trackers, uh, the lanyard, the, bind, the, band, uh, the binder, the card magnets, the Dropbox link, the guide, or the list goes on, right? So you have to properly equip them. In a sense, you want to over-equip them for the field, okay? So give them more than they need you're gonna do a lot of investing and you're never gonna get the number perfect. It's not gonna be $1,322, which means you're either gonna over-invest or under-invest. You might as well choose the route of over-investing in your new agents. This means help them with leads. Give them more than enough ride-alongs. Give them the time, energy, and money that you use to fuel your business to fuel their business. And so, I think the investment in your new agents, a lot of people maybe get burned once or twice, then they start to pull in the reins on that. You can't do that. You can't let past losses, you know, clear out, clear you out from new wins in the future. So you have to constantly, in my opinion, if I'm going to give them too much or too little, I'm going to give them too much. And so your return is going to come. Don't count the dollars in the beginning. Help launch that agent, get their career going. The returns will come in time if you do your job with them at the beginning. And in the beginning, probably the most important thing for these new agents to really latch on to our systems is fast deposits. They need money in their accounts. It doesn't matter if it's $100 or $1,100. They need to see that money is coming in and it works. And then they will believe in you. They will believe in our system. And then you have now an agent that will ride or die for you for the rest of their career. Amen. I love that. Ride or die. Yes. And, you know, I love what you said about just those field habits and making sure that, you know, your return on investment is understand that sometimes what you do today will have a tenfold in the future, not just for you, but also for your agent and not to look at these agents as their dollar bills, 
because they can see right through you, which leads me to pretty much going into our next segment when it comes inside that learning curve with Blair Ollendorf with how in the world can they have a connection to their coach? Why are you, as all the builders out there creating your agencies, why is it so important from the very beginning for that new agent to have that connection to you? So Blair, take it away, buddy. Hey, thanks, Ashley. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk so much about connection to carrier, connection to the calls, but the one that's really in our control is the connection to us, our, the coach. And um, so much of a new agent's experience, the reason they came to NASB in the first place was because of you. Whatever you did in that first initial phone call, whatever happened on that ride along, they believe in you more than they believe in Craig Harvey, more than they believe in Jordan Smith right now. They really are trusting their financial future with you, and that should mean a lot. Um, but really, that belief is, is so much, we have to turn that into trust. And the only way to turn that belief into trust is to put it through some adversity. And so really, once that belief can survive that adversity with our help, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really be the building blocks of our relationship with that agent. And so to really be able to get them through adversity, we need to find out what motivates our agents. And it can be pretty elusive. It may not be money all the time. It's easy when it's money, but if you can only motivate and coach and lead money motivated agents, you're going to lose a lot of people because you won't be able to push them through the adversity that they're inevitably be, inevitably going to face. And so, you know, Harvey talks about it all the time that they're either going to be motivated by money, recognition, time freedom, maybe it's revenge, right? Or maybe it's that rush of the sale. And so find out what is pushing your agent to go through all the, the stuff that they're going to go through uh, to make it in this business. But really once that they hit that brick wall, that, that trust is going to be developed through our response as a coach. And a, a key thing that I do and, and what I would encourage you guys to do in your development of your agents is a failure follow-up. So for every, every adversity that our agents face, we want to be there right in that moment. So every door approach on the first week, hey, when you don't get through the door, call me. Let's, let's role play that in real time when it's fresh in your mind. So I can tell you how to get through that the next time. Or just as important, tell you, hey, man, there's no way anybody's going to get through little Miss Johnson slamming the door before you get to say hello. And, and it's so much preserving that, that fragile mental state in the beginning. These little things that we just become so you know, jaded to, and we get this armor built up. These new ages don't have that armor. So we have to kind of be that for them. And so monitor that and then and give constructive feedback. That's so important. Uh, build them up through those adversities and, and you'll have them for life. Amen. You know, it reminds me of the Oreo approach so that when you're with one of your agents and what Alex was talking about, giving that quality feedback when you are field training them is make sure that you're taking notes like what Alex said and you're doing the Oreo approach. You're telling them something great that they did. And hey, listen, we all have agents that are, I mean, seriously, we're like, oh my gosh, what in the world can I find something great that they did? Maybe it was the connect. Maybe they complimented the agent in the beginning. Maybe it's their dress. But understand that we got to do the Oreo approach, which means say something positive and then say what you really wanted to say and then wrap it up with a positive, like a good call to action. But also when I really think about that connection to Coach Blair is making sure that we are asking questions and not just telling the agent what to do. We want to make sure that we are having our agents lead them to discovering things so when we are sitting down and having a coaching session with them that we ask them questions like, well, what are your goals for the week? Well, how did you perform last week? Are you happy with, you know, your deposits from last month? Well, if you're not, why not? And so it leads them down this beautiful, I don't like saying the word rabbit hole, but it leads them to discovery of you not having to tell them indirectly, but you really are telling them when they discover on their own, but you got to coach with questions. It's such a beautiful thing versus just telling them. One thing I really like to do, and this is something I hope everybody writes down is, it's a phenomenal question when you really wanna tell something or tell some, you know, tell an agent what to do, which is this, if there was something impeding on your success, Blair, would you want me to tell you? If there was something impeding on your success, 
Blair, would you want me to tell you? Okay, great, awesome. I really need you to memorize that step four when we feel trained tomorrow. Can you do that for me? I believe in you and I know you can do that. One of the two, those two words, need and help. I need you to do this, Jack. I need your help on this, Jack. I need you to contact the carriers so you understand that product, right? So really, again, it goes into really this next segment when it comes to inside the learning curve, taking your brand new beautiful agent going from good, I'm sorry, going from bad to good. So let's go next to Mr. Dusty Todd. Dusty, when it comes to creating the right habits for our agents, what would you like to say about that? Yeah, Ash, thanks for having me on. But yeah, uh, I think that the motivation and the excitement, that's going to get them going. But it's but ultimately, it's the habits that we create that's going to keep them growing long term. And so what I've learned is the way I've learned to coach my guys through that is with accountability and expectations and kind of setting the standard early on with them. You know, obviously, we have something called the four practices on our team that we teach all of our agents to do daily. You know, the conference call. Stand, making sure they have a, a standing order of leads and enough lead flow that's going to get them through the week. Also, the in and up phone call. Are they calling us? Are they allowing us to help them, you know, earn while they're still learning when they may not know everything? And then also the four knock with activity, understanding that activity is the key in this business. They're going to have to see more people today than they may later on, but activity is going to push them through. And so I'm going to teach my guys those to create those habits early on with those four things. And if they're not following those four things, I'm going to coach them, just like you said, with questions on, you know, on how we can help move their business forward. But it's those cre those habits that we're creating and distilling in them early on that I think is going to keep them growing. Also, schedule. You know, I'm really big on, on a new agent schedule. You know, so one thing that I like to teach is we uh, Mondays don't start on, on, on Monday. They actually start on Sunday. I think it's crucial for an agent to get off to a fast start, you know, on the on early part of the week. And how do you do that? Well, you get organized on Monday. So one of the things that I do is I have every new agent send me their schedule and their goals Sunday night. So we're recapping on how their week is going to be structured. But what that's going to do is it's going to get their brain focused on the week. So getting them off to a fast start, but it's also going to allow them to get organized. OK. And lastly, Ashley, I think one of the big, big components to coaching um, or excuse me, new managers to use for coaching is the activity drive. I think so many times, so many managers do not use that activity tracker with, with coaching their new agents. One thing that I like to do and I teach our team to do is we have every new agent in the first 21 to 30 days send that activity tracker to us daily. And we're going to coach on that, like basically how many people you're seeing, how many hours you're in the field and how many presentations or how many families you're sitting down with. If we can control those numbers, the rest go out the window. But by coaching on that daily, it's going to allow us to basically maybe see some things that the new agent may not understand or maybe some of the pitfalls that they may have, where their weaknesses may be. But that activity tracker is going to allow us to check their activity and allow us to know how to coach them. OK, and then lastly, Ashley, the last habit that you know I try to instill in my agent is go from the employee to the employer mentality. Understand that they're actually the business owner here at, at NESB. And when you do that, you have to understand that basically a lot of times, you know, the business owner is the first person to, you know, to open the door in the mornings and they're the last pe person to be there at night when they close the door. So it's the same thing here. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to work long hours, but I promise you it can be rewarded because you're working and you're growing a business for yourself. Amen. And, you know, it really just reminds me of the fact that we cannot, as their coach, as their leaders, we need to understand that these are the non-negotiables. So when you set the standard in the very beginner, 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 that is not a word, ladies and gentlemen, beginner, beginning. When you set the standard in the beginning, when it comes to these are the expectations that we will follow, but standards is what makes that person. And they want to drive to become a better version of themselves every single day. In my opinion, that is success being a better version of yourself every single day. And are we cultivating those right habits? And also, are we brave enough as their coaches to really sit them down and ask the right questions to allow them to lead them to understanding what their bad habits really are. Maybe they're lazy. Maybe they have self-doubt. Maybe they have negative self-talk. Maybe there's a book that you can give them that they can really 
hone in on and just read for 15 minutes a day to help them have positive self-talk or a better work ethic because they're lazy or they have distractions coming in the way, this is what your new agent will go through. So allow them, you are that captain of their ship. You're, you're literally coming alongside them. Give them grace. Do not micromanage them, period. You guys are business partners. You're business partners. You're not their subordinate or you're not their, they're not your subordinate. You're not their employer. This is your business partner. So make sure that you're treating them like that. And this really kind of goes into outside the learning curve now. So over the first 21 days, they're creating the right habits. They're on the conference calls. You are just, you're coming alongside them and you are helping them establish those really good standards, those really good habits to help them through what? The learning curve. So what happens outside the learning curve? How do we develop these agents to go from that bad to good and then to go from good to great? So I wanna go first to Mr. Blair. Blair, you said something so awesome when we were preparing for this panel and it's just all about leveling up and helping them level up as an agent. So talk to us about that. Yeah, look, if you're doing your, if you're collecting your activity trackers like Dusty was talking about, you should know when your agent gets to 100 presentations. And for me, that's such a huge number is knowing that that's the benchmark of like any job that you're ever gonna have, you're gonna come across different situations. And I think it takes 100 presentations for our agents to see really kind of everything. And I, I don't really let up, like I, I'm kind of like a, a helicopter mom in the wings until I know they've hit 100 presentations. And then I know, okay, this guy's gonna make it if he has some adversity in the house. I don't need you to just swoop in right away and in an up call to get him through an objection. He's got what it takes to get through it now, or she does. But once they get there, as a coach, really the next step is when they're competent, we gotta raise the bar because now they're confident, competent to confident. We have to set new goals, new standards, um, because if we don't, that confidence will lead to complacency. And that's where you're gonna lose a lot of people not that they're not doing well, but they're they're doing what they originally wanted to do once they got here. And once they're, you know, they have the money that they didn't think they were going to make in the first place. And, you know, maybe their debts are paid off a little bit, then, you know, they're like, oh, you know, maybe I want more time freedom rather than than to get out of this kind of bigger debt that I know that I'm coming here with. Let's let's set the bar at a different level and go from what do we need to make? What do we need to do in this business? So what do we really want to do in this business? And that's where you're going to really raise the bar to have a superstar agent very quickly, a rookie of the year agent uh, really quickly. And, and really what that takes is, and we've talked about a lot today, but find that new goal and then reverse engineer it. Because if they don't have that new standard at a, at a weekly and daily goal level, they don't really know how to hit it. And so spend time with your agents, raise that bar, and then break it down to the granular so that they know every day, okay, this is what I need to do to drive new. This is what I need to do to live new, to have that pool, to have the kids in private school, whatever it is that's driving them, reverse engineer that goal. And then ultimately, once they're really inundated in our culture, our NASB culture, you have to always be on top of the P2P. Know where your agent is, where he stands or she stands to hit her next promotion and help them get there and then really heavily incentivize. Um, you know, I, I've said it before on calls, I, I really feel like I bought my way to RVP just through creative incentives. And if you can get creative, it, it doesn't have to be a lot of money if it's creative, uh, but it has to be what drives them. And, um, you know, it'll get you very far. Amen. And, you know, it reminds me of, um, I mean, incentives actually create traditions a lot of times. I know for us, we did something crazy this year. We did a uh, these red king crab legs that you like literally, I mean, these guys are like the size of my arm and it's crazy, but doing these really wild and crazy incentives. When somebody hits maybe over 8,000 AP in a week, guess what? They earn that incentive. Or for example, I know um, next month we're doing a cocktails and dreams. Guys, we've been doing that tradition for over five years, the cocktails and dreams incentive. And just little incentives, maybe if it's their, you know, they've come out of their shell of 90 days and they've already done 100 presentations, maybe since you're tracking that potentially, 
Maybe you give them a new pair of shoes. I don't know. But guys, incentivize those folks because it actually leads to something that we're going to have Dusty talk about, which is creating this beautiful culture that honestly, it just allows for this um, beautiful ground and a foundation where people feel like they're a part of a team. And so Dusty talked about, talk about, you know, creating that culture um, when it comes to NESB. Well, actually, I think culture is king. You know, you said it, you said it perfect yourself because this business is just as much caught as what it's taught. Um, I really think that one of the things that I try to do is I want to get a new agent as connected to as many people as quick as possible. And, you know, whether it be social events, whether it be trainings, we do weekly coffees, all we're always doing everything to bring our team together. You know, for number one, I want them to understand that this business is greater than just them, but I also want them to meet and see other individuals in their organization so they can basically identify with them. Hopefully, you know, they're going to be able to relate with some of these people, but it's also going to set expectations for them as well. You know, so we're all the time doing social events you know, uh, weekly trainings, daily trainings, even, you know, all the time trying to get people together as fast and as much as possible. Um, but another event or another way that we're doing to build culture, actually, is going to be the cross training. You know, I think that's one of the things that's really elevated our team's, you know, growth of the last six to 12 months is because we're getting them associated with other people that they have a chance to see different styles. You know, so one of the things that we'll do when we come to cross training, if somebody's weak in a certain area, we're going to put them and pair them up with somebody that basically is strong in that area. Because, you know, think about it. Fear is just uncertainty. And so basically the more that we can get them associated with, with that problem that they're, you know, that they're fa faced or whatever, I guess, then we're going to be able to elevate their, their, their game. But building the team cu culture, you have to be very careful because I, I'm, you know, I'm very protective of our team culture. So with group chats, with, uh, you know, with social events, no negativity. We just want to we want to see the positive things that come out of this and we want to pull everybody together and, you know, and create a team culture. Because think about it. Nobody builds this thing in a vacuum. We're not we're no Lone Rangers here. We're all in this thing together. It's a we kind of thing, not a me thing. And so I think by creating that team culture, you're going to be able to elevate the game and you're going to be able to, you know, move the team farther faster. My gosh, Dusty. I mean, you really hit it on the head there, because when I really think of this team, understand that I did not want to hire people like me. That is the beautiful thing about a team is are you encouraging innovation? Are you encouraging camaraderie? And I love those cross, 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 cross line ride alongs, ladies and gentlemen. No, cross lining and just having these beautiful little cellophons. There are so many things that you guys can do and actually orchestrate in your teams the sellathons, the dinner outings, the coffee once a week that you said, a breakfast of champions, a dinner for winners, whatever you want to do, make sure that you are really pulling out and having this collaboration of all of your folks coming together. And it doesn't have to be once a month. And hey, listen, if you're a new builder out there, a lasagna dinner at your house, holy cow, guys, that's what it's all about. It's not about them, about you taking them to Roos Chris and having 20 people at Roos Chris. Sometimes it's just those beautiful moments at your home and just opening up your home to their family and just breaking bread together and fellowshipping. Because remember what, I wanna say it was Alex or Blair that said in the beginning that they are with you. They chose you, not NESB, they chose you. So make sure that you are that best coach that you can possibly be every single day. So I want to go to this last point. So now that we're outside the learning curve and we've already gone over leveling up, pretty much getting that stride, we're developing agents at this point. They're going from good to great. We're creating that culture inside the team. But you know what? This last point is very, very important as all the points are but it's about seeking progress over perfection. There is no peace in a perfect agent. There is no peace in a perfect agent. I don't want any of us to be perfect. But one thing that I do want people to be motivated by is progress. So Alex, talk to us about this, about our last point. Right, and I think it's easy. I think it's easy in the very beginning of having a new agent to give them all your energy and focus and attention. And this is where you have to maintain being an intentional leader and recognizing this new agent's story, this new agent's personal race and helping them run it as well as they can. Not as fast as they can, but as well as they can. 
right? Everyone's going to go their own speed, give them what they need to go proper. Okay. And, and really speaking to that progress over perfection, you know, that's going to be recognizing these small wins. It's going to be leveling them up. It's not going to be one big step from AG3 to just AG2 because of one reason and one sale. You're going to have to recognize these small things to build them up to get them through that. And then, you know, further and beyond. But the agent is never necessarily done or complete. You're never going, okay, totally hands off. Thanks, I've developed your team. I'm going to sit back and get my overrides. And that's, good. that's not how it goes. It's, it's constant, right? You, the builder, must constantly seek and progress and improve yourself so you can constantly provide value to your team. This is a, a lifelong partnership here, right? Your business partners for years, decades, hopefully. And so it continues with intentional leadership. You're never done serving your agent. And you're going to do that, I think, the best way through just maintaining mastery over the basics. You know, you can go off into this fancy stuff and, you know, cowboy clothes and sales and whatnot, you know, and that's fun and it's exciting to talk about, but it's the mastery over the basics and maintaining that with your new agents as they progress. That's what's going to give you a rock solid foundation as the new builder for your business, giving them the foundation they need for their business. The basics are what are duplicatable. The basics are what is repeatable. When you go to a, a magnificent sales seminar, a majority of it is the basics just repackaged. And it's because that's what works. And so it's implementing the basics and maintaining them with your new agents as they grow and giving them that continued education, right? And you don't want it to be a burden. The winners are gonna seek that information and education from you. Give it to them. Give it to every single one of your agents, even the ones that don't necessarily seek it out but you'll see who your winners are. You're gonna pour into everyone on your team and you're gonna continue that with intentional leadership and coaching to them. I am so glad, Alex, that you said the word intentional. That's one of my favorite words. I remember Laura talked about just being intentional um, the first year that I even met her. And I just, it's, it reminds me, this entire panel just reminds me of this one little quote that says, the best leaders are always the best servers. And in developing agents, you've got to learn to serve your agents, serve your team, because you will never, ever, ever um, go backwards, in my opinion, if you will always keep that on the forefront of your brain is constantly being able to give back and to serve them without expecting a crazy harvest or this tenfold result. You do it because it's the right thing to do, to pour in and sow those seeds of right habits and the right standards and the habits of just being positive. And, but are we that? So we can develop agents but it's very crucial that you also, as a leader and as a coach, that you are developing yourself as well. And that's where Jordan is coming in, you guys. We're super excited. So Jordan is going to be closing us out for this entire awesome webinar. So folks, gentlemen, I'm super duper excited. Wonderful job. Jordan, take it away, buddy. All right.